With its bright colours and apparent ethereal subject matter, many may not find my painting to their taste. But bear with me while I describe the ideas that have been revealed to me during its evolution and creation. You may not like the style, but I hope you appreciate there is some substance. The picture was originally conceived as one of a series that attempt to convey a sense of movement within a still image, taking influence from cubism. The movement made famous by Picasso. The approach is that, instead of depicting objects from one viewpoint, the artist depicts the subject from a multitude of viewpoints to represent the subject in greater context. Within Cubism, objects are analyzed, broken up, and reassembled in an abstracted form, which can be related to his work, although they are less fragmented and grotesque, with more of a flow and rhythm. Much can be communicated with the rhythms and patterns of movement, as opposed to a still snapshot. In many ways, it's an attempt to break free from time, to show separate occasions in time in one composition. His ambition hoped that it could convey a sense of the eternal, released from linear time. What proved to be more rewarding was not the final destination, the completion of the painting. It was the journey itself which went down many unexpected paths that he did not consider on its initial conception. The final piece was nothing like the initial vision. It took on a life of itself and it enabled him to communicate with the work. It became like an evolving meditation, like reading a book from his subconscious. He actually wanted to be a little removed from a spiritual theme but it crept back in as he realized its connection with the various spiritual traditions, especially from the East, whereby artists have used similar techniques and perspectives in order to break the view of linear time into a sense of the eternal and into the world of symbols and mythology. Often, images of Hindu and Buddhist deities appear with a multitude of various heads and assorted limbs symbolically positioned to be facing differing directions as if in movement. The various heads have different facial expressions and are facing differing directions expressing various aspects of the deity. For example, an angry expression on a face could express a wrathful aspect, while a blissed out expression would be one of the enlightenment. The arms are often carrying various tools that reflect a purpose. For instance, a sword, symbolizing the cutting through of illusions. The painting was originally created with charcoal, which is quite appropriate as we come from dust, stardust to be exact, and of course eventually will return to dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. As he tried to convey the sense of movement of a dancer, he noticed that the image was forming a circle. Well, actually, in the original charcoal version, a bit of a deformed circle, but as this evolved, it became more spherical in the painted version. The Sanskrit word for circle is of course mandala, and there is a tradition within many spiritual practices of creating mandalas, which often involve circles and other sacred geometry as an aid in meditation. On viewing this image, many have noticed that it has come into their meditations. As he further attempted to convey the dance, he noticed circles appearing within circles, and as he developed further, a figure of eight was appearing within the circle. Well, they say eight is heaven's gate, and of course, the symbol for infinity has the shape of a figure eight on its side. The image also made him think of the Cadacious, which is formed from circular intertwining snakes that spiral up to wings. This made him decide to put wings surrounding the dancers, also as if in motion, which, like the circle and the snakes, he had not considered on its initial conception. The movement is conveyed through several pairs of wings, 
One of the main components of shamanism, which is the root of all spiritual traditions, is an animistic perception. It is worth noting that the Cadaceous has the snake, which, because it has no legs, is the animal closest to the ground, the most low, and the eagle, who is one of the creatures who flies the most high and makes its nest up high. Symbolically, we have the most low and most high, earth and heaven. So, within the painting is the Cadaceous, the staff or wand of Hermes, which in the tarot is the wand of the magician. Hermes is, of course, the messenger of the gods, who can travel between the worlds of gods and man as the serpent travels up and down the staff or tree of life. Many have related it to the flow of Kundalini within the chakra system. It is interesting that DNA also takes this form, which was not scientifically visualized until the 1950s, way after these ancient symbols were created. The reason that people dance in circles is that it feels good bringing on a feeling of ecstasy. It connects us with the eternal, taking us into a trance-like state. From the tribal dances of ancient cultures existing today, such as Native American, to the ecstatic whirling of the dervishes, the pirouettes of ballet, to today's whirling and spiraling expressions from around the world, from Bollywood to MTV. It is unsurprising that dance follows this form, because the universe itself dances in a circular fashion, with some of its smallest ingredients, such as atoms and electrons, also following this circular path. It is the interplay of macrocosm-microcosm, so prevalent in ancient religious systems. Other cycles include the journey from birth to death, the annual cycle of the seasons, the lunar cycle, and its associated woman's monthly cycle. This is the dance of Shiva, who unites the male and female in himself, the two becoming one flesh, the dance able to both create and destroy the world. Again, the Kadesh signifies this unity, with the two snakes bringing together sky and earth, which in ancient times were signified by male and female. The dance is the incarnation of celestial energy, hence the ring of fire around Shiva. The male and female can be seen as polarities, like a magnet that have forces that can both attract and repel. Of course, most bodies such as stars, planets, and even people have a magnetic field that surrounds them, with a positive and negative pull. Within the painting, there is the sun-like sphere in the center, and if one perceives the painting as an energetic as well as an illustrative representation, we can make a connection with magnetic fields. The wings seem to represent magnetic forces. Like dancers, this field is gyrating, which creates vortices in the top and bottom, which can be related to the caduceus. This magnetic field can be considered akin to a womb, like a placenta. Like many people in our current eclectic culture, his journey took him away from the familiar monotheistic spiritual traditions that had become the mainstay of Western culture, to shamanism, paganism, and the traditions of the East. This is probably partly based on an attraction to the exotic, the discovery of the new, but as these became familiar, he found his interest returning to the monotheistic traditions. In the West, if people are asked to place a label on a dancing winged human, they'd probably call it an angel. It was never his intention to create an image of angels, but he had to concede that is what most people's conception of the picture would be. He remembered a class of angels called the Seraphim, and felt compelled to revisit his research into the angelic realms. Although we usually imagine an angel with wings, most people would not relate the symbol of the serpent with angels. Only fallen angels such as Satan, or those classed as demons within the Bible, such as Lilith, are usually associated with a snake. But the seraphim are repeatedly described as being fiery serpents. They are described as having six set of wings and four faces and serpent-like. The connection with fire further connected the painting with the seraphim, as in wanting the central circle to be like the sun. The dresses of the dancing figures are like fire. What is interesting is this angelic connection with the Cadaceous, as the seraphim are visualized as winged, fiery, and serpent-like, very much like a manifestation of the symbol of the Cadaceous. This is further compounded when one considers that the word angel is a translation of the word messenger, 
Thus, angels like the Greek god Hermes and Roman god Mercury are messengers. Almost a bridge between the heavenly and earthly realms, which can be seen as the function of the Cadacious. The Christianity that we know today makes no bones about it being a patriarchy, although he believes the current churches have distorted many of Christ's words and actions to suit their own agenda. This created what has been termed the mind-body split, where righteous people's actions should be directed by planning, obedience, and devotion, while drives associated with the body, such as spontaneity and instinct, are seen as the workings of Satan. Indulging in the bodily functions, they suppose, is synonymous with depravity and loss of control. This led to the infamous witch hunts of the Dark Ages. The church aggressively protecting its ideological monopoly with horrific torture and execution. Although not all Christians shared this belief, most especially some Gnostic groups who promoted dance as a spiritual exercise. In the Gnostic Gospel of Philip, it is written that Jesus intoned, To the universe belongs the dancer. Amen. He who does not dance does not know what happens. Amen. Now, if you follow my dance, see yourself in me who I am speaking. Amen. What is interesting is that the seraphim, like Shiva, seem to have this blend of heaven and earth, male and female, the snake and the eagle, although this often played down and just the heavenly, or higher qualities of angels, are promoted. But he believes them to be a symbol of unity. His favorite meditation on the paintings connections is with the Dakinis, also referred to as sky dancers from the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, which interestingly are also often compared to angels. Dakinis are considered to be the muses of those seeking enlightenment. Sometimes they can help in positive ways. Other times they put down obstacles with the objective of teaching lessons through experience, testing our will, strength, and integrity. The sky dancers in the painting seem to be inviting us into the dance. This can be related to Dakinis as they are seen to manifest the beauty of the truth, which is then an invitation to follow the path of truth. Dakinis beckon us to join them in their dance in the sky, using their powers to dazzle us, arouse us out of our sleep, enticing us through vision and inspiration. It is extremely difficult to define a Dakini, because that is the point. They aim to break our rapid fixation on concrete thoughts. Dakinis, in helping us to burn away our attachments, can be tricky, capricious, and unpredictable. We're in trouble when the Dakini disrupts our mind with magic, breaks our habitual thought patterns with the miraculous, or simply opens our hearts with mad adoration. But although we can be greatly inspired by a Dakini, they will only come back if we put into action what they have shown us. The picture has actually evolved very slowly over a period of years. He often finds there is a synchronicity between what is happening in the external world and what is happening in his inner world. The thoughts that are inspired as he works on his art find connection with what is happening in the world outside. With this in mind, it is worth considering that, as the painting was taking shape, two events were dominating the news. The first was that, what has been termed as the Higgs boson, God particle, which is believed gives matter, mass, has been found by the Hadron Collider. Curiously, circles play an important role in the form of the Hadron Collider. The circular 27-kilometer track that straddles between Switzerland and France has over 1,600 huge superconducting magnets, with most weighing over 27 tons. These send protons firing around at the speed of light, causing collisions that are believed to recreate a Big Bang scenario. The results are analyzed by various precise machines that also have a circular form. Intriguingly, some of the names include Alice, Atlas, and Totem. The resultant images that are formed by this analysis, he believes, can be related to the dance of energy that is the theme of his paintings. The CERN project has been embarked upon with the hope of establishing the unified field theory whereby it is ultimately believed that it is the same force that pervades through all matter and indeed light, although it seems to be separate. This theory first evolved in the first part of the 20th century through the upheavals of relativity and especially
quantum theory that shattered the foundations beneath classical physics. Existing theories of matter and light were reduced to rubble. That process of creative destruction made it possible to construct, over the second part of the 20th century, a new and deeper theory of matter-light that removed the ancient separation. Like the painting, the ancient contrast between celestial light and earthly matter has been transcended in modern physics. This can be related to our concepts of heaven and earth, earthly and celestial, flesh and spirit, which could be scientifically defined as light and matter, or psychologically defined as mind and matter. In modern physics, there's only one thing, and in the words of Nobel physicist Frank Wilczek, it's more like the traditional idea of light than the traditional idea of matter. Hence the title of his influential book, The Lightness of Being. There is also interest in an effect called supersymmetry, which could prove the existence of multi-dimensions. Although like the matter and light, these are unified and occurring simultaneously. But this can help to understand different states of consciousness and the visionary scene of the mystic. Psychology like the art, spiritualism, and science can be related to the painting. Freudian psychology can be seen to have flipped the previous patriarchal church system on its head while remaining just as polarized. Whereas the patriarchal church aspired to a higher self, patriarchal science liked to deny its very existence, seeing everything in terms of materiality and matter. Freud's system denies the soul or celestial. Interestingly, modern Western psychology tends to fall in two prevailing camps, Freudian and Jungian, although the Freudian camp is far more dominant and part of the establishment. They share some of the same concepts and beliefs, but Jungian psychology, unlike Freudian, has a belief in the same unification of spirit and matter that has become the theme of the painting. He was fascinated when he discovered that one could discern a meditating head within the image that he had not consciously intended to place in the painting. This was an unconscious expression of a representation of not only the external dance of light and matter, but an inner dance of the mind, accessed through meditation and psychology. But psychology that remains true to its meaning, not the modern day variety that can be more about the imprisonment of the soul. Jung was interested in finding common ground between the different academic disciplines from art to science, which he believed had become fragmented due to their increased specialization. A modern day example of this is Western medicine that tends to treat individual symptoms rather than consider the body as a whole, with the resultant frequent side effects. In order to establish this common ground, he met with esteemed figures from many academic and artistic disciplines, including physicists such as Einstein and Pauli. He later wrote that it was Einstein who first started me thinking about a relativity of time as well as space and their psychic conditionality. Years later, this stimulus led to my relation with the physicist Professor W. Pauli and to my thesis of psychic synchronicity. Jung and Pauli sought a unifying theory that would allow interpretation of reality as a psychophysical whole. Pauli thought that probability mathematics expresses physically what is manifested psychologically as archetypes, defined as deep structure patterns for certain types of universal mental experience, or patterns of the instincts and in synchronistic events. The Jung-Pauli collaboration was aimed at the explication of a unifying or connecting principle bridging the gap between mind and matter. Jung's theory of synchronicity posited that certain events, often called coincidences, actually reveal the operation of a causal connection between mental and physical events through meaning. Jung's definitive example of a synchronicity occurred during a therapy session. In the session, his patient was in the midst of relating an intense dream she had had in which someone gave her a piece of gold jewelry in the shape of a scarab beetle. As she related the dream, Jung heard a tapping sound on the office window, which was caused by a very large insect flying repeatedly against the glass. He opened the window and in flew a small goldish green colored scarab beetle. 
Many people like to separate art and science, but some of the greatest artists that have ever lived had an interest in science as well as a passion for art. Renaissance artists rediscovered and even developed mathematical ideas from sacred geometry that helped them in bringing depth and perspective to their images. Daly believed he continued this mystical science tradition and his work explored the scientific breakthroughs of his time, including the splitting of the atom through nuclear fusion in quantum physics. The painting was carried out in London in 2012 when the Olympics were due to take place, and while painting it, he began to meditate on connections within the painting to this event. Medals are given to successful competitors, and of course, a medal is circular in shape. The ultimate is gold, and indeed gold is an important color within the image. The sun is usually either depicted as a fiery or golden globe, and he included both colors within the image. Another important color is silver, which one could relate to both the sky and perhaps the moon. Bronze is very earth-like, and of course the picture is very concerned with the sky-earth connection. As is often the case with cubism, which he discussed earlier, there is only one dancing figure, depicted in various positions and aspects of the dance. The sense of movement gives the impression of many figures, but there are three central figures that seem to form a triangle and could be related to the pyramid of the medal ceremony. The Olympics, of course, traces its origins to ancient Greece and the Greek goddess associated with the Olympics, who appears on the medals, is Nike. Curiously, she is depicted as being angel-like with wings. Sometimes she's also depicted carrying the Cadacious. She is associated with victory, and indeed, when he was working on the painting and making these connections, this was how he was feeling about the painting. It is not a victory in the sense that it is one of the greatest paintings where he has conquered the art world, but more an inner victory in the way that it has, through synchronicities and meditations, enabled him to make realizations that have brought greater quality to his life experience in all its aspects.